Hi, I'm Matilda. And I'm Connor. I'm Rory. I'm Liam. I'm Scarlett. I'm Brody. I'm Lockie. I'm James. I'm Lexi. And I'm Cadence. We're from Strathewan Primary School. Strathewan is a small town northeast of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. The landscape is a mixture of grassy paddocks and eucalyptus bushland. It's a beautiful landscape, but the area is pretty vulnerable to bushfires. So we wanted to learn about fire and how we can make sure the community is well prepared and safe in the future. Each year we create a story about what we've learnt using plasticine characters and handmade props. In 2016, students made a claymation film about the fire danger rating system starring our local dog Jem Jem. Walking to school with Will and Ali, we see on the sign that today's fire danger rating is low moderate. And last year, we made a picture storybook about a family from the city that moved to Strathewan and have to adapt to living in a high risk area. This year, we wanted to do more to better understand fire behaviour and make sure we stay safe in the future. Now I'm going to be a little bit of a test. We started with a few lessons with a fire behaviour expert from the CFA, Jamie McKenzie. What were the three things that affect the way a fire will burn? Topography, yes. Weather. Weather. And the last one? Fuel. fuel. Fuel weather topography, absolutely. Jamie showed us how to measure the temperature and relative humidity with the whirling hygrometer. Slide that out and what you'll see is two thermometers. So this is what we call the dry and wet bulb. Wind speed and direction with the wind meter. So we've got winds gusting to 0.4 kilometers an hour. Topography with the inclinometer. So this measures degrees of slope. And the dryness of the fuel with the fine fuel moisture meter. We then learnt how to enter all this information into the MacArthur meter to find out the FDR or fire danger rating. The FDR tells us how difficult a fire would be to stop if one started on that particular day. Part of learning how to use these tools is sharing the knowledge with other people in the community. So we gave a demonstration to Malcolm, the farmer next door. Hi Malcolm. Hi. Today we're going to be showing you how to use the moisture meter and what it tells us. Okay, so first we open it up. So this is a grinder, these are herb scissors, this is the power charge, that's a sample ring, this is a compressor, and this is a brush. Oh, no. First of all, we press power. Today we'll be measuring brown eucalyptus, so we press four. And then we attach the sample ring, then we attach this grinder um, to here. Okay, so then we get these scissors here and we just chop them in. Okay, so then we grind this all up. Okay, there we go. And then de-attach this. And this is a compression tool. So you put this on, lock it into place. And we press example. So the moisture in these leaves is 43.8% and that tells us that it would not burn that easily and it wouldn't start well. I'm impressed to hear it. <laughs> then we showed Bridget how the MacArthur meter works. Today I'm going to show you how to use the MacArthur meter which is also known as the forest fire danger meter. We have the forest fire danger meter to tell us what the fire danger rating of the day will be. When I ask for the figures in the column that you choose, can you tell me them? Yeah, sure. How many millimetres of rain was there? 30 millimetres. How many days ago? 10 days ago. The drought factor is 7. So I move this up to there. What was the relative humidity of that day? 80%. Now I go down to here, and what was the air temperature of the day? 34 degrees. Now I move the 34 degrees to the 80%, and what was the wind speed? 45 kilometers per hour. When I go to the 45, it will show that it's low to moderate. Well, that was very impressive. 
It's great knowing how all the instruments work, but to find out about what might happen in the future, it is important to know what has happened in the past. So we invited Wurundjeri elder Uncle Ian Hunter to visit us at school and tell us about the importance of fire to local Aboriginal people. The Wurundjeri people look at the eagle, Bunjil, as their god and someone really, really special. He created all living things. Well, the crow wasn't happy about that. So the crow snuck down and he grabbed the fire. And with the fire, he thought, I'm going to take it, and then they'll have to come to me to get the fire. So the crow had the fire in his beak. Bunzel heard about this, the eagle. He's gone, I'll just keep up here watching him. And here's the crow flying all the way around through all the trees, and he hid the fire in particular trees with the special spirit from the fire. So the crow went back, and he gone, you want the fire? Got to come to me. With that, he flew away. And the eagle come down and said, don't worry about him. I know where the fire is. Come with me. So they went and they found the fire in two very special sticks. He said, now, in that stick is Shorty Woody, the fire spirit. You can coax him out, rub him backwards and forwards, then call Shorty Woody, Shorty Woody Woody, Shorty Woody Woody. And at the same time, you blow the spark. You will then have the fire in the sticks forever. Hearing Ian talk about fire reminded us how important it is for cooking, warmth and hunting. It seems as though the Wurundjeri aren't afraid of fire, but respect fire. To get a better understanding of Strathewan's history with fire, we organised a bonfire at Malcolm's farm to talk to some past students about what life was like when they were at school. Kids rode their bikes. It was very simple and everyone was very friendly. You knew everyone. We didn't have much play equipment. One of the main games they played was jacks. But we didn't have nice, pretty coloured plastic ones. We had bone you know, ones, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. from the roast. The yeah. bone ones from the roast. We used to collect and the knuckles. Mm. And back yeah. in those days, the sanitation system was a little bit basic and the school required us to go up the back digger hole and take the can out of the toilet and go and empty it. And it was just one of the jobs that you had to do. Where did you get your food and supplies? We used to have the truck come round, remember, with the green grocery truck. We discovered that in 1939 there was a significant fire event called Black Friday. Our school principal, Miss Haywood, spoke to her great aunt who remembered Black Friday. And I can remember thinking there was only one place for us and that's the dam. Yes, yes. And in those days the dams were pretty small, wouldn't have been much more than over our knees, but I thought, well, that's the only place we've got to go. But it was a really hot day. It was 46, 47 degrees, I think. Was it, Ken? I don't know, I just, I didn't know it was awful hot. <laughs> We did some research and found out that in the lead up to Black Friday, there had been a long, dry and hot summer following a drought period that had lasted several years. Considering the wind speeds, temperature and days since rain, it would have measured code red on the FDR board. In 2009, Strathewan was impacted by the Black Saturday bushfires. We spoke with one of the parents at the school who remembered the Black Saturday fires to talk about the conditions in the days leading up to and on that fateful Saturday itself. The four days preceding the fire was really, really hot temperatures. It had been 40 degrees plus. It was extremely dry. We hadn't had any rain in quite some time. Trees, the leaves, everything was dry. And it was another one of those really, really hot days, really, really windy, very hot wind coming in from the north. And it was just, a really strange day, everyone was really edgy, people weren't sure what was going to happen, they knew something bad was going on but just didn't know how bad or when it was going to get here. We discovered that there had been a long term drought and in the two weeks before Black Saturday, Victoria experienced a severe heat wave with temperatures over 43 degrees for three consecutive days. When temperatures reached 46 degrees and wind speeds were more than 100 kilometres per hour, the fire risks conditions were intense. The FDR on Black Saturday was code red. Our school was destroyed during the Black Saturday fires, so when it was rebuilt, a number of safety features were added, including two massive water tanks, pumps, a sprinkler system, and window shutters. 
With all these safety features, our school is much better equipped to withstand bushfire. But throughout this project, we have realised that it is important to take responsibility for yourself and your family. It's really important to be prepared and stay informed about the conditions during summer. Back before Code Reds, people used to consider that you could stay and defend a house or stay and defend a property and it would be something that could be managed. Today, Code Red, you wouldn't consider staying to defend anything. You'd just, in the morning, leave, pack your treasures and not be there. I don't know what it is, but fires didn't travel as fast then. They just fly now. We love living in Strathewan, but on an extreme or Code Red day, the safest place to be is out of the area. And this year, as always, we are preparing for bushfire season. What do you know about this program? I know that you as students are developing this program to make yourself more aware of how fires impact our environment and in the process of you learning about that, you're going to put a little story together with all the little clay models we're doing upstairs. What have you been making today? We made a kookaburra. I've been working very hard on the delivery truck that Mr F. Ricardo drives and now I'm painting the outdoor dunny. That's good. <laughs> we have made the horse. Mm. I've helped with a fire stick and an old fashioned bicycle. We started to make a girl. We had to get the boss wood and make it into her body and then shape the body and then put the clay around it and then her head and her neck and her arms. Sometimes I think that the adults probably get as much out of it, if not more, than the kids. And are you having fun? I'm having a ball. Why do you think our program is important? Education when it comes to fire awareness and fire safety is really important when you're so remote. Look, I think it's very important to have a program like this that teaches people, especially young people, about our environment. It's a very unique environment. It's a beautiful area to live, but it comes with challenges. When I look at a community like this, you understand what fire does, you understand um, what will happen, and you're more likely to survive because of what you're learning here. Children are often excluded, but we find that when children have an opportunity to learn, about bushfires and bushfire safety, they actually feel much less afraid of bushfires. A project like this is just so important because it gets everybody in the community prepared. I would hope that at the end of the journey, Matilda, that you've actually learnt a lot about fire yourself and so if something happens, you can pass it on to your grandpa and grandma or you can pass it on to your mum and dad or your brothers or sisters or friends. So when a fire happens, what we find is people like you actually can be directly involved in saving life and saving property more so than what I can do driving in a big red fire truck. It's the children who are really driving the process and making the decisions and often children aren't in that position of being the decision makers and we think that's what makes this program really special. It's how you band together as a community during the fire and just as importantly how you support each other after a fire. When children are included it has huge benefits not just for the kids but for everybody. Who am I? Cut. I'm Jimmy. No, you're not. I'm Jimmy. <laughs> are you recording? I screwed up. We can have bloopers. Bloopers are good. Can you hear that? Do you want my answer? <laughs> so what am I asking? I was one of your slaves. Yeah, my slave. Mm -hmm. Our students are confident using the inkling. Oh man, I'm not sure how to pronounce that inkling. Inkling. Wait, what was I asking? <laughs> We've lost it. Are the numbers counting? Yes. Yeah, I think you're recording. What was I asking? Matilda's doing a runner on us. She's had enough. 